So now you have the DJI Pocket 3 and you want to take your footage up to the next level. In this video, I'm going to show you how to color grade your footage, make a custom LUT that you can reuse over and over. And there's one thing that I do that is different from basically all other YouTubers. However, I'm not a professional. I'm about as much as a color stylist as a fashion stylist. I'll be using DaVinci Resolve for color grading. However, I don't actually use it for editing. This will apply for most professional style cameras. So if you have footage from multiple cameras, you can do all of this all at once so you can match the footage together. Chapters in the description. So the first step you need to do, which may or may not be the most obvious thing, is to film in a log profile. This is going to give you washed out gray looking footage. However, there is a ton of data in there and the DJI Pocket 3 has 10 bit data as opposed to 8 bit. So 8 bit would give you 16 million hues 10 bit color gives you 1 billion hues so that means that your files will be more flexible your files will have more range and it has a lot more depth to it you'll be able to color grade to your heart's deepest desires Bruh. this second step is very important and it's going to speed up your workflow incredibly and it's going to give you everything that you need and that is to get your test sample footage. When I get my test sample footage, it's not as easy as just going out outside. I start inside with lights and with the curtains pulled and I'm using indoor lighting. I'm not using professional studio lighting. It's just whatever light bulbs you have and that is going to be your baseline indoor shot. Next up, you're going to go to an area where you have shading. However, it's not direct sunlight into you. So you just go by a window, use that lighting. The shade lighting can produce a different look. So make sure you have that. The last place I go to is going to be outdoors directly into the sun. So pick a sunny day because you will need to see how your camera behaves in the sun, which is probably going to be the most important aspect of it. And there is one thing that I do differently from all other YouTubers, and that is I have the color green on me. I have the color red on me wearing that red jacket. That is by no accident. And lastly, when I'm outside, I have the sky prominently in the frame. That makes all the difference in the world. For whatever reason, red, blue, green is really important with the hues. And coincidentally, the RGB model uses red, green, and blue to make all of the colors that are outputted from your camera. I figured this out by years of trials and errors and of making terrible LUTs. <laughs> All right, so the next step is to color grade it. So you will need the DJI Transform LUT from their website. You will need DaVinci Resolve and you will need your footage that you just acquired. If you're not able to edit your 10-bit 420 footage, I created a hack a long time ago. It's basically a loophole into how you can transform your footage into something that you can edit. So if you don't own a studio copy of DaVinci Resolve, use that hack, import your footage. It's going to be a one-time deal that you are going to make a LUT for yourself. And we will open the footage in DaVinci Resolve and get right to it. All right, here's my footage. You can see that I start inside, I'm here and um, outside. And when I go outside, I even do a spinning shot somewhere at the end, just so that I can see you know, how it looks all the way through all different types of scenario. And the color is so important because that's where I'm going to color grade off of is this one down here. Okay, right there. To input the LUT, just go File, Project Settings, Color Management, Open LUT Folder, go to the DJI Folder, drag over the LUT. There you go. Go back to Project Settings, Update List, Save. Now, I can apply the LUT right to the footage and you might think that you're done. But I'll tell you exactly what's wrong with it. This is it right here. You see that sky? The skies aren't nuclear like that. That just is not going to work out. But because of uh, we have the look here, we can get an idea of uh, what it should look like. 
or with our own eyes and with our own judgment. So to work on this, you just uh, basically right click here, add serial node before. Okay, so this is where we're going to do the color grading. To do that, basically we're going to work with the hues. There's three hues that I work with, and that is going to be this hue versus hue, hue versus saturation, and then hue versus luminance. And they all do sort of different things. So the first thing is that we're going to go to hue versus luminance because that sky is just bothering the hell out of me. And so we're gonna put points everywhere just by clicking these right here. And we might remove some. So first thing, the luminance. And you can see what this does right here. You see the sky? It's, it's peaking right here at this little peak thing right here. So when I move this, I'm gonna remove this so um, I have a more a uh, gradual curve. I'm going to pull down the sky right now. And that that makes it deeper and not as bright. Uh, I'm just playing with it. So the next one is going to be uh, the hue versus saturation. Well, now let's, let's skip that. Let's go to the color because we will deal with saturation later. And the thing with color is that you kind of want to nuke things out in the beginning because if I nuke out a scene like this, okay, this scene is nuked out. I can see that my, there's too, many, too much greens, right? So, but when you do extreme pulls like that, you can get an idea of where the color should be. Okay, so right off the back, I don't want the reds to go towards magenta. I would rather them go towards orange. And I could see like right here, that is a good tone, but I'm gonna turn on uh, the skin one uh, vector scope. Okay, so this arrow right here just shows that my skin levels are way off. And there you go. You just mess with it until it points up to this direction. But in doing that, the color red is not good. But since we are working on blue, let's just hop back and forth. <laughs> Sorry about that. So the blue, you can do two things. You can go towards magenta or you can go towards teal. The thing is that the DJI is already towards the teal. I might uh, exaggerate it more just so that I, I can pull it down later because we still have a panel which is hue versus saturation. Okay, so we're gonna pull down the saturation in a little bit. So here's the hue of the sky. My skin tone down here is still good. Let's see if we can modify this the reds to be towards the orange. Okay, so sometimes you just screw up, so you just erase it and just put new markers there. There is no judgment for that. See, the, the reason why I have this, this jacket is because when you're using a, a color chart, it's just too small, so that's why I wear that purposely. All right, so you're going to have to play around something around this much. You see, I'm just moving it around and I'm making sure that the greens are accurate. This green is supposed to be a dingy green. However, having a deep green like that doesn't look so bad. I'm moving up the slider, the reds, just a little bit because it will give that uh, sunset light glow like all the time. And that's uh, that's appealing to me, but not too much. Okay, so something like that. And it may look like too much. However, we're not quite done yet because now we know the skies are are really, um, they're, they're nuclear right now still, right? And we're gonna get back to that. Loom versus saturation. Let's just put up some points. 
then we start to pull down the skies. You see that if I pull it down here, you know, when you go minimum, maximum, you can see better. So I'm just going to pull it down. And I want the transition to be wider. Okay, so the shade of blue, it's, it's just not not right it's that's candy right so we're going to go back to this uh hue finder right here we're gonna try to find the best shade of blue i'm going to have to add another point here because maybe i want to control the blues better and not not let it bleed over that is too tealish Okay, I, th I think that's good right there. And now I'm going to go back to that saturation. And I'm going to bring it down. There you go. Something like that would do for the blues and the saturation. And I'm going to double check that the luminance. Okay, so. Okay, so maybe I want it deeper, but I, I think this is enough because I still have to play with the scene. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to one over and take a look. Make sure the nodes are showing now. And before, after, before, after. So this is too teal, in my opinion. Uh, I can turn down the saturation even more. Because I just don't want the sky to be over powerful. Here we go, turn it on. So this is like... This is an okay look if you're into that thing, but I, it's just not for me. And when, when I click it on, you can see that there's more oranges in the leaves. It looks more fall-ish, more sunset-like, but at the same time, it's going to be subtle. You don't want to make gigantic LUTs right off the bat. All right, so, so now that we have this large file, we're just going to scrub through it. How does it look indoors? I can just scrub right back. Okay, so here's my indoor shot. Before is towards the green, after. Okay, so there's not much change indoor, and yet at the same time, didn't really mess things up. Here, with it on, here's off. So the blues got deeper here. Off, on, and deep blues, that's not really a thing to worry about. And lastly, you can go back into the original shot where everything started. It's on currently. Has anything messed up? Turning it off. On. So with it on, I see that the colors, the colors in the skin look a little bit better. But that's, that's just my opinion. Off, on. Off, on. So with it off, I am towards the green. There's something green about my face but with it on it looks a little bit more human so now you may be ready to go you just right click and generate LUT and I would point to a 33 point LUT because the 65 I just see that it's, it's often not compatible but wait I would not export your LUT at this time and this may be frustrating for some users but I would go take a nap. I would go take a walk. I would go somewhere out of the house and refresh your mind for at least two hours. At least two hours. When you come back to this footage, have another look at this. Because you're going to see that your eyes are fresh. You're getting a second look at your own LUT. Does this LUT look okay? Uh, am I really satisfied with it? Are you really, really satisfied? Because you want to finish up the LUT. You want something that's usable that will sustain you for a long amount of time. You definitely want to save this project as well. Because if you have another camera, like the one I'm filming with is a ZVE-1, I can replicate the scene exactly by just starting to film in here with the artificial lights, with my red jacket, with my green backpack and then do the moves and so forth. I could even do that entirely handheld and just get it done really fast. And when I'm done with it, I can match the footage so that you have 
seamless transitions between the footage because quite frankly my footage can be trash at times and i know nobody even complains about it in my videos but i use a gopro often and that footage is just absolute trash anyhow i hope you guys picked up some tips or tricks along the way hope you enjoyed it thank you so much for watching be sure to like subscribe share all that good youtube stuff see you in the next one take care